Well, I thank my very good friend, uh, Mr. Johnson from Louisiana, for uh, offering this opportunity to speak on the, these important issues. Mr. Speaker, one year ago this week, President Biden stood before the American people and said that inflation was temporary. At that point, the Consumer Price Index, which measures, measures inflation, of course, stood at 5.4 percent. In the 365 days since the price of nearly everything has increased, and the Consumer Price Index has skyrocketed to 9.1%, 9.1%, eggs are up 33%, milk is up 16%, chicken is up 18%, and worst of all, Americans are paying over 60% more for gasoline than they were a year ago, costing the American family, my constituents, and throughout our country nearly $6,000 extra a year. And now we have our transportation secretary telling us the truth that this pain, and I'm quoting, will lead to more purchases of electric cars. <laughs> so that was the plan. Thanks for being honest, Mr. Secretary. Meanwhile, however, the administration nor the Secretary of Transportation has any understanding of where the energy comes from to charge all of these electric cars. They are not exactly chess players, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> and as my, my friend from Mr. Uh, Mr. Johnson from Louisiana put it, inflation, incompetence, the third eye? Immigration. Immigration, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of taking any action to correct this devastating problem, the effect that it has on American families and small businesses and large businesses, you name it, dogs and cats probably, the Biden administration has doubled down on the backwards policies and undertaken a massive blame game campaign. Not exactly a profile and courage taking place here, Mr. Mr. Speaker. First, they branded the inflation brought on by their reckless spending, the Putin price hike. And then, uh, despite inflation beginning long before the Russian invasion of Ukraine, by the way, then the administration laid the blame for their policies at the feet of greedy corporations, yeah, and then local gas station owners. Mm. Mr. Speaker, 60% of the gas stations throughout our country, and certainly in my district, are owned by small independent business people. They're to blame for the gasoline prices that we're paying? I'd like to reiterate, when faced with the highest gas prices in history caused by atrocious energy policies, the President of the United States and many Democrat members of this House point their fingers and blame small business owners. The American people are not fooled by the Biden administration's fingerboarding, though they are paying a steep price for it. Despite the administration's best efforts to deceive the American people, we have learned that inflation was not temporary and has continued to skyrocket largely because of the Biden House Democrats' out-of-control spending. And instead of addressing America's inflation crisis, House Democrats have continued to push for billions more in government spending, which will increase inflation, not decrease it. Continued excessive spending will increase inflation. It is a mathematical and physical certainty. We must correct course, stop the reckless spending, and unleash domestic energy production, which will strengthen both our economy and our national security. We must also stop over-regulating and over-taxing small businesses. And enough with the blame games and these go-woke and broke policies. They have failed the American people. And Mr. Speaker, the free nations of the world need a strong United States, both militarily and economically, to lead. We face serious threats. Free nations worldwide know that the world is a far more peaceful and stable place with a strong American leadership. The weakness shown both at our southern border and the Ukraine border initially have had devastating effects on humanity and on the stability of the United States, Europe, and the free world. Only with a clear vision, realistic plan, and earnest execution will this be corrected. Mm. I yield back.